I've not looked. If we need one, you can order it online, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, because it'll tell you. Try Gary Tate. Come on. I manage Gary Tate tomorrow. They're going home. I'm wiped her eyes anyway. We're going home. My legs are tingling. What? My legs are tingling. Come on. Go. Boy, you doing tomorrow? One Nina. You're on your online. Yeah. And then I'm in uni on mon on 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 Wednesday. I'm in on Wednesday. I've got an exam, and then on Thursday as well. What's your exam, love? It's just a presentation. Have you done it? Oh, I do. I do the presentation, and that's the exam. Yeah. Well, it's not really an exam, but like I'm assessed on it. Yeah. Yeah. And what time do you have to be for that? Uh, it starts. I have to be there for the whole thing, so it starts at half twelve. But my presentation is only at two o'clock. But you have to be there for the but whole thing to get you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just have to get books. Yes, you do look like a frog in the way. But you're a soft one. Oh, it's got a little thing on it. You see. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> Hello. You were deceived by a lie, and all the way. There's a chance behind everything you do. You mustn't 
<laughs> hey. Oh yeah, I've not moved my scooter yet. <laughs> I've got my dog with me. I'm having a break from my work. I've got my heater on. And I'm watching Star Wars. <laughs> Rosa. Hello. <laughs> So I'm going to give you a quick little haul video. Um, I did. I have filmed a birthday haul video for my 21st, but I've not uploaded it yet. I've not even edited it yet. But um, as you've probably seen, I've been to work today and my best friend at work gave me some gifts. So, hello. <laughs> I will show you them right now. So first off, um, whenever I been to the house we've played card games but I don't know how to play card games because I don't have friends to play card games with up until I met this friend um so I've got now the card games bible which has the instructions to like a hundred bajillion card games in there so I can learn how to play them I've played I don't know what it's called a few uh I think is it 21 something where you have to get the number closest to 21 i like that one no uh and like chase the ace i had no idea what i was doing with that and we played um what might i have an app of something 10 stop it uh yeah so i can learn card games and to learn then she got me some star wars cards which are very cool they've got like memes on which i find very funny <laughs> And then the final one, which is amazing. Would you mind? She's just chewing a bottle. Um, hi, Mill. Um, so it is a little plush hippo from the BBC Earth documentary. And it's so cute. And it's actually made from recycled plastic bottles. She's just making... She's just being loud. She's just being so loud when I'm trying to film. Also, yes, she did drag some of my paperwork earlier and I've just let her have it because I don't need it. It's just the title. Okay, you you do that. You you do you. Yeah, he's very cute. Christened him Moto Moto from um, Madagascar because he looks that's really so good. He's too cute. Yeah. At least I've got such a big double chin. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to do a quick run through of my presentation for Wednesday. I'll that bring you along with me. It used to be 12 minutes and then 3 minutes for questions. So we shall see how long it takes me. So I shall start. Hello, um, this is my talk on my dissertation topic, which is an ind independent systematic review and a meta-analysis of recent research into artificial blood meal substitutes for Aedes aegypti. So Aedes aegypti are a type of mosquito, and I'm sure you've probably seen this picture around the biosites building. This is actually a female who's currently taking a blood meal. You can see this because her proboscis is actually in the skin there, and her stomach is filling with blood. So these uh, mosquitoes are a, bit, are a bit of a pest because they can transmit herbiviruses such as dengue, Zika, Zika chikungunya and yellow fever. Now, as these are very serious diseases because they cause a lot of health issues, but they're also very serious because, as you can see on this map here, they have a very wide range. So each of these countries that are coloured in red, in recent reports, there's been at least one case of at least one of the um, arboviruses that I mentioned. Uh, in some cases, such as like in Kenya, all of them have been reported. So it's quite an issue because they're not just isolated to one place, they're widespread. 
So because of this, we really need to sort of invest research into eliminating this disease. And there are three main ways that we do this. One of them is research into how to treat the diseases so that they don't cause as much health issues. Uh, one of them is vaccine research so that we can actually give vaccinations to people so that they don't even catch the disease in the first place. And then another which a lot of research and investment has been put into is uh, mosquito control, mainly through the sterile insect technique, such as using Wolbachia mosquitoes. This means that we need to do mass rearing of sterile mosquitoes, which we then release into the wild so that they breed with the wild mosquitoes and then their offspring can't reproduce. So the line of transmission of these herbaviruses stop. But a bit of an issue with this, if we're going to be rearing huge, huge, huge numbers of mosquitoes, that means we need huge, huge, huge amounts of blood because in order for a mos female mosquito to get the proteins to make th these eggs, they need to take a blood meal because usually they drink sap from plants. This sap doesn't provide them with any sort of proteins, so they need to take um, source these elsewhere and that is from mammalian blood. Um, as you can imagine, if we're going to be rear using blood to rear mosquitoes, this brings about quite a few issues. Um, for example, there's the ethical issues that come with using blood. How can we prior prioritise rearing mosquitoes over someone who desperately needs a blood transfusion? And obviously, if we're going to be using animal blood as well, it's the argument of, are we just rearing animals for the sake of slaughtering them for the blood? Um, there's also issues of how we can maintain the quality of blood to rear mosquitoes because um, blood can degrade quite quickly. It usually only has a shelf life of about two weeks and it needs very specific storage conditions. And finally, it is very, very expensive both to store and move blood as well as obviously keeping the animals alive to get blood from them. So it would be very, it would be a nice ideal if we could somehow get some sort of alternative blood substitute to rear mosquitoes off. It would be ideally, it would be would be able to support egg development in them. It would be quite cheap to use. The components will be accessible so that all types of insectary labs can make it, not just um, really high funded ones. It would be quite simple and easy to prepare, and it would have quite a long shelf life, so it can be used and save it can be made up and then saved for quite a long time so that it can be used for numerous generations rather than using it for one it goes off and you have to throw it away so the aim of my study was is to hopefully raise awareness that this field does actually exist i know you probably won't really think about oh we need to make fake blood to rear mosquitoes off but it do, it is an actual field that people are doing research into uh, i would like to also hopefully encourage other insectaries to try these techniques and move from using animal sourced blood towards these substitutes as well as hopefully using elements from each of these studies to determine possibly the optimum components for making one of these artificial blood meal substitutes based off the ones which have the most promising results so what did i do to start off with, as I mentioned, it's a systematic review, so I needed to obviously get my sources. So I used three search engines, Google Scholar, PubMed and Edge Hill Discover More. I chose these three because they have an advanced filtering option that I really liked and was quite simple to use. And in these search engines, I searched for, I used three search terms, Aedes aegypti, which is a species of mosquitoes I was looking at, blood meal, because I wanted to look at them being fed a blood meal and artificial because I wanted to look at both a normal blood meal and an artificial blood meal. I also decided to add some extra filters for so that I only add studies that were published throughout 2012 to 2022. I did this because I wanted recent, recent studies in the area and I also filtered that all the papers should be in English because although I can read French I highly doubt I'll be able to understand all the scientific terms in there. <laughs> so after I'd done this search, I ended up getting almost 300 papers. From these, I read through the abstracts and the titles of all of them and managed to narrow it down to around about 77. From these 77 
um, I then um, from the 77 I imported the citation into a software called Ryan I then ran a duplicate de detection software and I ended up deleting all the duplicates that were within it and I ended up with 53 studies in these 53 studies I got the whole text I read through the whole text and narrowed them down that way so I went I created an exclusion criteria as to why or why not I would include these studies such as it actually didn't involve Aedes aegypti for example some titles just had Aedes and I wasn't sure and it didn't mention in the abstracts if it what type of species it was and it ended up when I was reading through it was Aedes albopictus instead of Aedes aegypti things sort of like that um after doing that I ended up having six studies from these six studies I then started looking at the data so for three of them it was perfect all the raw data is available there's even in-text data that I can use for the other three there was no supplementary material or raw data and the in-text data was mainly graphical so like it was bare charts of the means with the standard deviations on and I couldn't really extrapolate the, the means and the standard deviations and the total egg numbers from them so what I started doing was I contacted all the authors and asked them to supply me with some with the raw data so far I've been contacted by three one of them has sent me over the whole raw data set another one has sent me over partial and another one I am still waiting to hear back from um, so more than likely I'm going to end up with possibly four studies rather than six but from those that I currently do have data on, I've begun, I have been extracting the number of females that were fed the blood meal, the number of eggs laid, the number of these eggs that hatched and calculated the hatch rate. I've also extracted some additional information just to ensure that the studies that I'm using are fair to compare. So for example, uh, I've looked at the conditions of these studies. So the rearing conditions used in these studies. So for example, uh, if one study used standard rearing conditions of 27, cent 27 degrees Celsius and another one's using 50 degrees Celsius, it isn't fair to compare that 50, them two together because obviously the different temperatures are going to be definitely affecting the hatching and the egg laying rate, weight, rate there. So I would exclude the one that is around about 50 degrees um, I also just wanted to include this slide to show, sort of give you an example of the data that I'm working with at the moment. So this is one study, I think it's Tile et al. And it is just the data on the number of eggs. So from all this data, I then I need to calculate average um, number of eggs laid. Uh, I'll, and then I'll also be doing this with the data for the hatch rate. And then I'll be doing repeating this again for the, each of the studies. After doing this, I will then input all the data into. I will then input all the data into something called Revman. Um, from Revman, I can do a lot of analyses. So I'll be doing a risk of bias assessment. Um, I will also be creating a forest plot, which you can see here. So basically, what I'll be hoping to determine from this forest plot is the ideal blood substitute um, that blood substitute will have the square box here which represents the weighting of the study so the larger the square the higher the weighting of the study ideally it will be directly in the middle of this line here because that line represents if it crosses that line, it means that there is no significant difference between the two variables. In my case, the two variables will be having had a blood meal and having had the artificial blood meal substitute. Because I don't want there to be any difference between these two. I want them to have the exact same life history as the ones which have had blood. Otherwise, there could be issues further down the line. Um, from this, the ones which are most central, I'll try and extract which features may be contributing then to that and combine them together to suggest an optimum substitute um also hopefully if the results 
tend to all cross over this line it could hopefully encourage other people other researchers to use these types of blood substitutes because they can see quite clearly there's no significant difference in the life history of these mosquitoes that they're rearing without using unethical blood and encourage them to possibly try out using these substitutes and hopefully make mosquito research a bit more ethical so i would like to thank claire strode who's been my supervisor for all this and also the corresponding authors who i've managed to reach out to on contact if you'd like to contact them yourself and maybe get some more information in this research area i'd be happy to supply their emails for you and i'd like to thank you for listening and does anyone have any questions yes 12 minutes i did a bit of stuttering but it was okay <laughs> goat yoga <laughs> what are you doing do, 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 do. <laughs> She's like, who's that? Okay, see ya. <laughs> that is my back, by the way. Like, I'm currently, like, turtle on the floor. And she sat there. Well. I am doing work typed in, typing in this position. But, like, now I'm, like, stuck. Do you mind? I mean, I can still grab my iPad, I suppose, and do. <laughs> Hello. So, I'm like turtled on the floor. <laughs> and she's <laughs> on my back. Oh no. I'm like. Uh oh, shall I try and just lie down? Oh, 